guys it is Danny and welcome to this updated video on the tropics guys and so we have somewhat of an imminent threat to land in terms of the US and what is now designated as invest 96 l that is the disturbance located just off the southeastern coast of the US and also in the open Atlantic we still have our invest 95 l still accelerating westward nothing much has really changed but we're going to be talking about it what it is going to be doing as we approach the end of this week and is there going to be another system after 95L. And so guys, before I go into details, Okay guys, and so let us first kickstart things with our Invest 95L. And so as you're seeing, the chance is still at 30%, so it's been quite stagnant, and the system is accelerated westward. And so by late this week, it's going to be approaching the Lesser Antilles, and it does have a chance to develop. Um, if you're hearing rumbling in the background, it's because of some inclement weather in my area right now. Okay guys, and so in terms of 95L, it is expected to make its way over portions of the northeastern Caribbean as we're going to be moving into this weekend and very early next week and so it could bring some very very inclement weather conditions some heavy rainfall uh, some gusty winds so because heavy rainfall is anticipated there is going to be that risk of flooding and so guys ensure that you're not in a flood prone area which is really an area that is easily flooded whenever it rains or easily inundated by heavy rainfall guys and so looking at satellite view there we have the system getting a little bit more organized but it is not the best right now and we do kind of have limited shower and thunderstorm activity taking place with this system here guys but of course as time goes by once conditions are going to be at least marginally conductive we're expecting to see a bit of improvement with this system as it accelerates westward in terms of what our models are expecting in terms of its peak intensity we have two models expecting that this thing here is going to be achieving category one status and quite a few expecting it to eventually achieve tropical storm status and most models here are showing this remaining beneath tropical cyclone status for the next 60 hours or so so maybe by late this week or so guys it has the potential to become a tropical cyclone and so the next name after danny is elsa so if we have both invests becoming tropical cyclones they'll be acquiring the names danny and elsa respectively for whenever they develop and which develops first and so now let us go on to that disturbance invest 96 l and so at this time as you're seeing it is given a 50% chance and it's highlighted in orange now which means that the chance is at a medium percent for it to develop and so it is possible certainly possible that we could have this thing here developing because it is getting a lot better organized and if we have these continued development trends there is no doubt that this thing could achieve tropical cyclone status so it is possible to achieve tropical depression status or maybe a weak tropical storm because it is going to be moving inland late tomorrow going into early Tuesday and so as a result we're not expecting a whole lot of intensification especially also it is in an environment that is not the very best in terms of supportive conditions guys and so let us take a look at satellite imagery of the system and here we have it so it is getting quite organized right now guys and so as i said once we're going to be having these continued development trends there is no doubt that we will have a tropical cyclone and so tomorrow is really going to be the best point that it has to really intensify thanks to the warm ocean waters of the gulf stream so just before it is going to be making its way inland it is going to be over the warm ocean waters of the gulf stream and then it is going to be moving inland and so when it moves inland there is going to be heavy rainfall from the system because it is a rainmaker and you've probably experienced some gusty winds but the winds are the least of the problems in any landfall in tropical cyclone it is always the rain that causes the most destruction and so if you are in areas to be affected by this system uh, along the coastline of the northeastern section of florida georgia even south carolina please take the necessary precautions and stay safe because this system here could really bring some dangerous impacts despite being a tropical cyclone or not and so taking a look at the wind shear map now we see that it is in a region where the shear is a bit favorable but closer to the coastline the southeastern coastline of the u.s we're seeing here that the shear is quite 
quite strong, which is indicated by those reds. So reds mean unfavorable shear, the yellows mean in neutral, and the greens mean favorable. And so we're seeing that we mainly have those reds, which indicate that conditions won't be the very best uh, as the system is going to be accelerating more westward approaching the coastline. But regardless, guys, as I said, this thing here is likely to cause some dangerous impacts regardless of it achieving tropical cyclone status or not. But let's see what our models are expecting for the system here. And so we're seeing here that we just have a few available, but all agree that we will have this thing here reaching tropical storm status. And again, it is not guaranteed to happen, but based on the recent development trends, if they continue, it, there is no doubt that we will have a tropical cyclone. And sometimes when we see them forming out uh, like that, or even our subtropical cyclones as well, we see them rapidly intensify at times. And so it could be the case with this system here, guys. And so we really have to pay attention to it as it's going to be making its way westward. And so in terms of the ocean temperature map, we're seeing here that ocean temperatures in the vicinity of that disturbance isn't the very, very best right now, but again, it is going to be making its way across the warm ocean waters of the Gulf Stream, and so that is really going to be helping it to get a lot better organized and intensify further. And so guys, now let us go ahead and take a look at three of our models. So we're going to be looking at what the GFS is showing, what Euro is showing, and what the CMC model is showing in terms of our two systems here. So this is Monday, the 28th of June, so tomorrow and then there we have that disturbance 96L making its way to the southeastern coast of the US and so looking out in the Atlantic we're not seeing much just a bit of moisture on our organization seen for 95L and to know that you look at the black lines which are called the isobars and so they are lines of equal pressure when you see them in a circular manner with the pressure below 1030 millibars especially in the main development region that is usually a tropical cyclone that you're looking at and so we're not seeing anything much happening to 95 L. let's go further out and see if there's a change and so by tuesday the 29th we see that 96 l definitely made its way inland uh, probably just a few showers and thunderstorms remain across portions of the u.s from the system and so out in the atlantic there we see 95 l being a 10 11 millibar low pressure system and so we're still not seeing much organization and so let us go a bit further out to wednesday the 30th of june the last day of the month and so there we have 95 l uh, probably just some increased shower and thunderstorm activity to taking place in portions of the Lesser Antilles. And again, these showers could result in some flooding, guys. So if you're in the Lesser Antilles, please take necessary precautions and be safe, at least for the midweek when this system here could make its way across your region. Despite it developing or not, it could still bring some dangerous impacts. And so taking a look a bit low latitude out in the Atlantic, we see that area, maybe another wave emerging off Africa. So let us go further out. And this is Saturday, the 3rd of of July and so there we have 1013 millibar system right there approaching the Lesser Antilles and so as we go further we see that nothing much becomes of that system there uh, but we do have a bit of moisture spread across portions of the Eastern Caribbean guys especially the Lesser Antilles and so it is possible that we could have development of a second system but based on the model trend with the GFS it is shown that most likely after the system reaches a point it eventually dissipates loses its organization and that can all be due to the dry air and the shear that are kind of dominating the region at this time and is the reason we're not seeing much development taking place at this time of the year but of course as we're going to be progressing later down into the season later down into july august september we're expecting to see a lot more activity taking place as conditions are expected to become more and more favorable to support these systems developing and okay guys so let us move on to the euro model now and so this is tomorrow the 28th of june and so there we have uh that invest 96 l and there we have it it is looking quite impressive here so maybe a tropical depression potentially a weak tropical storm about to make its way inland and looking out in the atlantic we have the euro showing 95 l maybe becoming a little bit more organized let's go further out and see what's expected here so this is thursday the first of july and then we have there we have 95 l definitely made its way over the lesser antilles and is now in the eastern caribbean but Take a look behind it. Is that a tropical cyclone trying to develop right there? Or is it already a tropical cyclone? 
So guys, that is the latest run for the Euro and so it is possible that we could have a second development taking place but as of right now, we don't have any new areas of interest that is marked by the National Hurricane Center. So we really have to wait and see what's going to be happening. Now let us move on to the CMC model again. This is tomorrow, the 28th of the month and so it is showing 96L, potentially a depression at that point, maybe a weak tropical storm uh, about to make its way into the southeastern portion of the US. US out in the Atlantic we're seeing we're not seeing much organization in terms of 95 L but let's go further to Thursday the 1st of July and so take a look at that it is showing 95 L definitely made its way over the Lesser Antilles and has emerged into the Eastern Caribbean and it is picking up on that same system that we have the euro picking up on and so Saturday the 3rd of July now it is showing 95 L intensified in the Caribbean just in the vicinity of Jamaica that would be very interesting to see and in terms of that other expected system showing it's well low latitude guys and so now to Monday the 5th of July Euro has 95 L intensifying and headed into the Gulf of Mexico and by Wednesday the 7th it has it making landfall along the Florida Panhandle so this is quite interesting i have to say this is quite interesting to see and again none of this is guaranteed to happen guys and even based on what the national hurricane center is showing in terms of the potential track of it we're expecting a northwestward movement after the system makes its way across the lesser Antilles and emerges into the eastern caribbean guys so i'm not saying that what the cmc is showing won't be the outcome but but it doesn't seem very likely at that point but who knows we could be surprised and so guys we really just have to keep paying attention to the tropics and of course i will keep you updated as time goes by guys and so that is really it for this updated video and so if you found it to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts in the comments or ask a question i will try to respond as best and as soon as i can and just remember to always be wise and of course i will keep you updated as time goes by